hi, and welcome, or welcome back to the Night Sky Knitting Podcast. My name is Rachel, I am your host, and I am a knitter based out of Ottawa, Canada most of the time. And this podcast is my knitting journal and chatty outlet to talk all things knitting because I am simply obsessed with it. Today is Tuesday, May 24th. We are coming out of a long weekend here in Canada, and I'm hoping that this will be a bit of a briefer episode because one, I don't have that much to talk about, and two, I am experimenting with knitting during my lunch break for my new summer job so that to see if this is potentially a solution or something that I can do every so often to balance maintaining the schedule that I feel is comfortable for me for uploading and also working a nine to five job. So. We'll see how this goes. I don't think that there is anything in this episode that'll be particularly surprising to you if you watched my last one, but nevertheless, I hope you have fun. All yarns and patterns will be linked in the description box below, as per usual, as are my Instagram and Ravelry, both of which are updated very sporadically, but I did go through and add a bunch of notes to Ravelry projects in case you don't want to go hunting through a video to find where I talk about certain things. It is written out, hopefully helpfully, on some of my Ravelry project pages if Ravelry is accessible to you. Speaking of Ravelry, I don't really have any acquisitions for this episode. So in lieu of acquisitions at the end of this episode, I'm going to be talking about the Ravelry bundle I created that you guys hopefully will have access to of all the patterns and designers that you guys recommended or submitted as giveaway entries a few episodes ago. And hopefully that'll be nice. So without much further ado, let's get started. The first finished object that I have is what I'm wearing. This is the Bina V-neck sweater by Gregoria Fibers. And it is knit in drops air in the color, in the color off white. Here is the ball band in case you want to see it. Color is 01. That is the logo. Ball band. There you go. And I'm going to stand so I can show you this photo properly. Here it is. It is a simple drop shoulder v neck pullover. It's not really a lot to elaborate on that. There's this nice folded over stockinette hem, which was really the, the thing that really sealed the deal for this for me, the detail. And I added waist shaping to make it curve in a little bit more because I am 5'1 slash like 156, 157 centimeters. And I find, especially with high-waisted pants, if I don't add waist shaping, I find often sweaters really overwhelm my frame. So I added that every few rounds as I felt was appropriate. You could if you wanted to, you don't have to. I really like the size and shape of these sleeves, except I don't like showing you guys the shape of these sleeves because they're so short. <laughs> and it really makes it clear how short I am and how short my arms are. <laughs> in proportion to that. I mean, they're proportional with the rest of my body, but showing how short my arms are, I think is maybe a hint as to how short I am in real life. So love that for me. I knit this in drops air. It took me pretty much exactly five full balls of it. And I'm happy with the sweater. If something was to happen to it, I think I would, yeah, I'm pretty confident that I would knit myself another one, except I have like a, a lot of little things about this sweater that kind of bug me and pretty much all of them are my own fault. The first of which is I chose to use stash for this and because it is old stash and I only had two balls of it, there are three different dye lots in this sweater and I was quite nervous about that so I did choose to alternate skeins and that means that there, there's just like a few wonky lines of tension where I couldn't keep my tension consistent. Can you guys see that? Where I really struggled to keep the tension consistent. 
while alternating skeins in the round. There, are, there were a million ends to weave in, all of which I did, however, weave in. Very proud of myself. Shouldn't be, but I am very proud of myself. And because this is knit at a looser gauge, those ends are a little bit more visible, which is annoying to me. I did, however, knit this at a much tighter gauge than is recommended. And to account for that, I went up one garment size and I knit this on a 5.5 needle as opposed to the recommended needle, which is a six millimeter. Um, I do feel that this looks kind of messy. I, I think I managed to mostly fix the messiness that was going on here by just weaving in the million ends I had to kind of close up the holes from picking up the stitches. I don't think that this looks too bad, but it was originally messy here. Also, again, this is my own fault, but I originally tried to use this yarn to freestyle a sweater uh, quite poorly, and then I unraveled that sweater to knit this, and I re-knit that even before it went into this. I think three times I frogged it and re-knit it, and I did so at a much tighter gauge than this one. And so up here, even though I knit this part flat and the bottom part in the round, I feel like my tension looks more even here because the yarn had not been manipulated and stressed out yet. Whereas I feel like, I don't know if you can tell, it just feels a little bit messier down here in part because of the existing crumpled, crumpled texture of the yarn um, after I stopped, ran out of the new yarn that had not been used yet and started using the yarn that I had used quite a bit. And okay, this is something I don't like, but that's the pattern, but I knew that going in and I could have done something about it, but then I chose not to. And I don't think, I mean, again, I've been wearing this a lot since I knit it and I'm very happy with it, but it doesn't have short row shaping in the back which on the one hand would make this a very good beginner sweater pattern. On the other hand, it does affect the fit and I think it would be a little bit more comfortable with that short row shaping. And I'm wondering if the reason it goes up in the front, which is something I don't love, but am living with, is also because of that lack of short row shaping. And I just think that maybe this okay so this these are two kind of contradictory thoughts however they are still both true for me i'm very happy that i used this yarn for this project because it got it out of stash this color goes with a bunch of different pants and i think that this color and this this color for this kind of neutral makes this an incredibly wearable sweater for which is fantastic because i wanted this as kind of a nicer alternative to a sweatshirt for those lazy days when I wanted something big and loose and cozy but wanted to look a little bit more put together by just not wearing athleisure or not wearing pajamas. This fits the bill. Hands down, it's done, it works, and I'm very pleased. I also like how light and lofty this sweater is because of the blown nature of Drops Air. It's very light and flowy. I like that, and Drops Air is a very generous meterage. It's 150 meters in 50 grams, so I got a full sweater in the second size, but to fit the first size um, out of five balls. I like that a lot. But I just, I think that I would really, again, even want this at an even tighter gauge. I just, I think it looks a little messy. I think that's a matter of personal preference. I think I just maybe like a little bit of a tighter gauge, which is good because I'm a tighter knitter. But yeah, I think the recommended gauge for this is 14 or 15 stitches and four inches, which is kind of loose to me. And I really do like a loose flowy sweater here and there. And I like that I now have one in the form of this, but I look at this and I'm like, you know, you know I, I saw a few people this long weekend and I was wearing the sweater for most of it because again, I'm getting a lot of wear out of it. It exactly fits the bill for what I wanted for it. And I think I will continue to get a lot of wear out of it moving forward. But people would say, oh, did you knit that sweater? And then I said, you know, I'd say yes. And then I would almost want to follow up and, and I was almost like, but this is not my best work. Like don't judge my knitting skills based on this. But obviously no one else cared and I didn't need to elaborate. And they were just, I think, mostly impressed that um, I can knit and the people still knit, but I hope that kind of gives you an accurate idea of how I feel about the Bina V-neck. I think it's a nice pattern. I think it's a classic look. 
I think it's very wearable. I'm very happy to have it in my wardrobe. I think I'm going to continue to get a lot of wear out of it as I have since I finished it and we're still in that kind of transitional spring weather here. But, and I would knit this pattern again, but if I was to knit this pattern again, I think I would use a different yarn. I would use maybe a more substantial yarn or just kind of a thicker one to fill in those stitches a little bit more. I would add, and I would add short row shaping to the back. Those are the two things I would do differently, but I'm happy with this, even though I complained about it. I am really happy. So yeah, I like the two by two rib. I like that the sleeve isn't super stitched. There is shaping. Sorry, it's creased because I've been wearing it. But I like that there is shaping to kind of gradually taper that sleeve, but that it's not a super tight one like most of mine are. And that is kind of my, you know, default thing that I think to do when knitting a sleeve. And I think this will, this fits the bill, you know, for what I want for it. If you like this, and you're looking for whatever reason you don't want to knit this one it's very similar to my favorite things knitwear sweater number 14 the v-neck version instead there is a two by two rib v-neck and the gauge is a little bit different and so if you do want to knit this but you want to knit it at a bit of a tighter gauge but also you could very easily just modify this to add a two by two rib regardless you have your choice and your pick of v-neck sweaters should you want them and that's kind of one of the nice things about knitting you can you have so much control over what you're doing that you can choose a pattern and a yarn or modify a pattern to make sure that it exactly fits your specifications which is pretty neat so that is my first finished object my second finished object which i actually finished before this one is this they're both white. You can see that this is an off-white when I hold it up next to a true white. But this is the Streamline Tank by Two of Wands, knit in Lion Brand Kobu. Pew, 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 pew. It has this detail down the front and the back. Oh yeah, can you see? Yeah. And this is my fourth or fifth time knitting it. I knitted it in the color white and I modified this one because I could and I wanted to. This is for my mother. She has one other one that I knit for her in blue. You can see it, I think, in one of some of my earliest podcast episodes, but I also don't recommend that you watch those because, uh, man, are they uh, rough. However, this is meant to be knit flat in two pieces. You knit identical front and back panels and then you seam them up afterwards. I didn't want to do that. It would take me longer than I wanted and I prefer knitting in the round, especially since there's going to be enough flat knitting after you separate for the front and back that I was still going to get both. So first modification, I knit this in the round and then just put the back on hold and knit the front. And then once that was done, I put the stitches on hold up here and then for a three needle bind off at the top I like how sturdy that is and then I knit the back. I omitted that detailing down the back so that my mom would know which is the front or in the back and also so she had a reversible thing but with a little bit of difference for when she wants to wear one versus the other. And I think most meaningfully but also you can't super tell is that this is all so that detailing down the front and these straps and the bottom hem are all supposed to be done in half fisherman's rib and because of that and because this is the fourth time i have knit this yeah this is the fourth time i've knit this i hate half fisherman's rib i have yet to find a useful tutorial on how to fix it when a mistake is made and therefore if you can't fix a mistake in your knitting then i don't know it's kind of useless to me because i'm going to make a mistake i am always there's always going to be something that I don't know, needs to be fixed. And because I couldn't fix it the last time I knit one of these, I had to frog the whole thing and start over, which is why I've knit this pattern four times, but there are three finished objects to show for it. So instead I did a, I don't even know how to call what to call this. I did half twisted rib, but the way that I did it is that 
I would knit one, purl one for one row, regular ribbing, and then the next row I would knit one through the back loop and purl one, you know, as in half twisted rib, and then I would knit one, purl one again for the following row, and so on and so forth. So one row, half twisted rib, one row, regular rib, which I think creates this nice textured graphic look anyway, but is a million times easier to deal with than, ha than half fisherman's rib. And the reason why I did it like this is because A, I hate Half Fisherman's Rib. I think it is a monster. And B, because the very first time I knit this pattern was for a friend of mine. And I misunderstood the instructions for Half Fisherman's Rib. And I did this for the whole garment. And my mom saw that and tried it on and liked it. And then asked if I could make her one or actually I fully volunteered. And... Um, then I, when I started to cast on that one, I realized that I had completely misunderstood the instructions for Half Fisherman's Rib. Tried that for the first time, complications ensued. And so I knew that my mom liked this texture and that it didn't substantially change anything about the pattern because I'd already done it once before, like this, by accident. So this took me about eight days, which included a lot of knitting because I took the train from Ottawa to Toronto, which is about four and a half, five hours a few weekends, online class, blah, 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 lots of knitting time. And I knit this monogamously. This is the only thing I knit in that period with the exception of two hours of park knitting with Emily from High Fiber Knits on my whip, which is a sock. And I got it done pretty quickly because at this point I know the pattern very, very well. It's not complicated. This is not a bad beginner pattern. And it's, you know, it's chill. So yeah. My mom likes it, it fits. I wove in every single end and she says she's happy with it and I'm gonna choose to believe her. I hope it's true. Yeah, so here's the Streamline Tank by Two of Wands, knit in Kobu, line brand, Kobu. You can't really see the white texture. Okay, yeah, that makes it a little bit clearer. Sorry, it looks so creepy just lurking in the background there in the shadows. But this is my second finished object. Oh, it's really kind of blowing out because of the light, but I'm very happy to have that done because I knit it for my mother's birthday. And it's nice to clear gift knits off the list because I kind of always feel them looming in the back of my head and it makes me happy to get them done. So from there, I fin I have a hoe, a half object, which is the first prototype wild strawberry sock completed. Here it is in its entirety. It's creased from being in my bag. Strawberry sock. It is a straw uh, sock that I designed to look like a strawberry. Because wild strawberries are very nostalgic and important to me. And with any luck, I will grow some this year. I don't think I'm going to be able to eat any of the strawberries. I imagine the birds and the bunnies will get to them first. But it's just one of those things that makes me really happy to have in my yard. And I had these yarns in stash. And I looked at them and it just kind of came to me one day. So I finished this after I finished the top for my mother and the sweater for myself. All The only thing I had to do for this was the sleeves. And then the finishings, you know, wash, block, weave, and ends. So it didn't take me very long because 5.5 millimeter needles, short arms, short sleeves, yarn that grows, etc., etc. And I was working on these. And then my... And so the thing I do to combat second sock syndrome is to cast on the second sock immediately. And I was working on this twisted rib this weekend and watching some silly rom-com TV show, you know, to have just a nice chill time. And out of nowhere, it just hit me right in the head how to fix the problem I had earlier where the leaf, the leaf pattern didn't really line up nicely at the back of the sock. I should probably show you on the actual one that has the, the sock that doesn't, yeah. The sleeves look kind of wonky at the beginning and end of round because I just couldn't get the stitch count quite right. And that didn't really bug me at the time because it was meant to just be a pair of socks for me out of my brain using stash and, you know, for nostalgia and for happiness and because I love Colorwork socks and 
the thing about socks is once you knit a few of them, you can kind of figure out how to do your own, which is really, really nice. And that meant that I could use up two stash yarns, do a pattern or, you know, create a little pattern that makes me really happy. And the exact kind of color work that I really enjoy, which is minimal float catching, really cute and whimsical, using stash, etc., etc. But then I showed you guys, and then a few people have kind of inquired about whether or not I will release a pattern for this, and I've been considering that. And while I work on it, trying to keep notes down, sorry, trying to write notes and keep track of how I'm doing this so I can maybe write it up and you guys can recreate it if you so desire. And then that little leaf thing started to bug me, as well as a couple, couple other little things. And so I was working on the second sock, and because I still haven't actually made up my mind, whether or not this will be released as a pattern, it doesn't really matter. Because again, I'm a hobby knitter. I'm not really a pattern designer. Even if I do release this as a pattern, I have no ambitions of transitioning into being a serious knitwear designer. I don't have the brain for it. I don't have that kind of creative output. And also I am pursuing a career in something else that I'm passionate about, which is really, really nice to have. So that's a long spiel about whatever. But I was just working on the twisted rib, watching some drama, and bam, it came into my head how to fix the little leaf pattern problem. So here's the new one. And that was really, really heartening, really boosted my confidence and morale and my zeal for continuing to work on this. So I worked it out in Stitch Fiddle just to make sure before I started it, and it did work after all. And so I zoomed through it because I was just so excited. And then I'm onto that color work that I love so much, that three by one color work and I'm knitting my little sock. And so I'm gonna have two mismatched socks in terms of the leaves up front, but if anything, that kind of makes me happy too. So yeah, my little wild strawberry sock is my half finished object. And oh, and it fits really, really nicely, which makes me really happy and that made me nervous. Um, yeah, and here, which I guess is kind of a two in one because you know, half finished object and uh, introduction to my first whip, little wild strawberry sock, which really I have been kind of taking a while to knit considering they're just socks, but other things keep coming up. And because I sometimes want to be paying attention to what I'm doing so I can replicate it for the second sock. And in case I write a pattern for it, sometimes, I mean, this is not really always what I want to be knitting on for mindless knitting. And so it's not always the first thing I reach for. When, especially when other things maybe have a bit more of a deadline attached. For example, the top for my mother for her birthday and also so it's done so she can enjoy it for this hot weather season that's coming up in our northern hemisphere. I'm getting this done so I can enjoy it for the very last of the cooler weather where you're gonna want a wool or where I'm going to want a wool sweater where I live. So now that you know those two white knits are done, I'm back to my strawberry socks and very pleased. Another thing, and then my last whip, is a My Secret Summer Crop by Jessie May, Jessie Made Designs, which is really just right now a tube of stockinette with minor shaping and some rib at the bottom, using the leftover yarn from my mother's top, because even though the pattern only called for two balls of the line brand Kobu for the size I knit my mother. I accidentally bought three because in my mind for some reason I needed three because of the math that I did based on the last one I knit her. But the last one I knit her, I used like half a ball of the one that was left over from my friends. And then I think from there I had to buy her two. And then I still had a substantial amount left over, but I did crack into that third state, third ball. And so I guess in my head I thought, okay, so you're gonna need three for this, Rachel then I didn't. I needed one and a half. And so I had one and a half of this cotton um, and then rayon from bamboo yarn left over, which is nice and really soft and really silky. And I'm enjoying it a lot more knitting it in the round where I can have the second, like the holding needle be one size lower. I find it a lot smoother and more easy to work with as a plant yarn. And I was kind of running out of things to knit because I finished that top for my mom. I finished this, though I do had I did have to buy needles because I forgot to buy the body size. Sorry, I forgot to pack the body size needles for this, which was just a goof and very annoying, but whatever. 
they'd also been purchased that is my acquisition and the one ball i needed to finish this in the third die lot but i was kind of running out of knitting and i went through a nice streak of only working on one project at a time but i did want something to alternate with this because i do find that my hands and my eyes get tired if i spend too much time on a tiny needle project with a small circumference like socks and i had this yarn and i didn't want to buy anything else and i do find that i think i'm okay at using special skeins and not letting whole skeins of precious yarns languish in my stash for too long but i do think i sometimes get into the habit of wanting to leave yarn that's been like oddballs or half used skeins for like the perfect project as opposed to just knitting it into a scrunchie and then having it out of stash and so having us you know enough of this yarn left over to make a garment i thought okay might as well just make a garment for yourself rachel because you need stuff to knit you are trying to not contribute too much to your stash and this is a really nice yarn it's decently affordable by the way so i cast on a summer secret top there's the magic knot join from where i joined the half skein to the new full skein i'm knitting this in a size medium which is one size up from the recommended size for my bust size if i was sorry working with the uh, pattern's actual recommended gauge however i'm working off gauge and i have quite a bit of this left over more so than was needed for the small and i kind of want to use up more of it so my thought especially since this is a little bit more of a really soft slinky fantastic for summer garments yarn and in a lighter color, meaning things show up underneath a little bit more. I want this to have more ease than the intended pattern. Than the recommended amount in the pattern. So I can, which is, okay. So the pattern suggests zero to two inches of negative ease which means it's, you know, the final circumference at the widest part is still smaller than my circumference at the widest part of my bust. I want this as more of a loose, beachy cover-up top or something that I wear on hot days over a visible bralette in the park so I get a lot of breeze and I'm not sweaty, but I still have coverage and something that i can just tuck you know toss into my bag and it'll be really really comfy and also use up this yarn in a garment that i think even if it's not the most glamorous thing in the world i will get a lot of use out of and will be very practical to me because i need more not ratty summer garments and i would like to have some backup new, okay if they get ratty summer garments so that the ones I want to stay nice for longer do indeed stay nice longer. I feel like my brain has suddenly left my body and nothing I'm saying is coming out correctly because nothing I'm saying or trying to communicate is really that difficult except somehow my brain is just completely glitching right now. All of this to say, I'm knitting this. I'm hoping it'll be kind of loose and flowy as opposed to more of a tight fit so that I can wear stuff underneath because I just, I think that with this color, I don't know if I would want to wear it braless. And I think that this will be nice because a lot of my summer tops, I've said this before in my Make Nine video many months ago, but most of my existing summer tops have gotten kind of old and worn and stained because living in such a cold weather climate, I have always focused more on having good professional or comfortable knee cold weather garments. And then because my summer garments tend to be more exposed to the elements, I sweat in them, they get covered in sunscreen, they get a lot of you know, sun and, and dirt from sitting in the park and all sorts of things. That's something that I do not prioritize in terms of shopping. And then I've been lucky to receive lots of hand-me-downs and secondhand clothing that is appropriate for a summer wardrobe. 
but I haven't actually bought anything for summer except for a couple pairs, sorry, pieces of like summer office wear in many years. And as a result, I just, so much of it doesn't really fit my lifestyle anymore, doesn't fit how my body has changed, and it's just kind of gross and holy and worn and stained. And so I do think that it is a priority and still practical and reasonable and makes sense for me to knit a bunch of summer garments that fit a variety of settings and uses and types of outfits for hot weather for me because I kind of need every type of summer top, if that makes sense. Some looser, high neck, cuter ones, some that I can wear to the beach or to sweltering hot, humid park days when this is going to be covered in dirt and sunscreen and sand and be okay with it. And, you know, everything in between those two types. So I'm happy with this. If slash when there is some of this left over, um, I'm hoping to cast on immediately some washcloths and like face scrubbies and things like that for myself. And if I have enough to make some for others, keep those as potential gifts moving forward because this is a really nice yarn, really soft, and I think good for removing makeup or just washing your face because it's white so you can see the makeup that's coming off. And it's really soft and it's a plant-based yarn and I think it's machine washable. So that's kind of all my knitting updates, honestly. I, in terms of acquisitions, I bought one, actually I bought two balls of Drops Air and Off-White to finish off this and a pair of 5.5 needles because I left mine, my interchangeables in Ottawa, even though I knew I was coming to Toronto for two and a half weeks, I thought I put them in my project bag. I simply did not the doy bad move on my part. But then I ended up returning one of those skeins of drops air because I did not touch it. I was able to do this in five balls because short arms, waist shaping, knitting for one of the smaller sizes. And I was waffling over what to do with that sixth ball that I completely didn't touch. And then I thought, Knitomatic has an exchange, return and exchange policy. Why not use it as opposed to having, you know, two balls of this out of stash, one ball in, and then be stuck right back almost at square one where I knit this in part to get those skeins of drops air and off-white out of stash only to end up with one still in stash. And I was thinking, oh, I could use this for a really nice kind of Breton stripe sweater at some point. Okay, cool, I definitely could, but I don't really need any more sweaters at this particular point in time, it is May. I would like less stuff in stash, and I could always just go back and get another skein of white yarn if I really need it to. So, moral of the story is if you need to, you can maybe return the yarn that you have left over if you haven't used it, depending on your local yarn store's policy. And if you're looking to avoid endless accumulation of stash and leftover and particularly scrap, maybe remember that. Maybe that would be useful to you too because it was a bit of a light bulb moment for me when I realized, oh yeah, I can just return this and then not have to put it back in stash or think of some type of scrappy use for it because I think I'm good about knitting from stash, but I'm not always great about using my scraps, if that makes sense. So yeah, no acquisitions to show this week. However, I did order a lot of yarn, so there will be quite a bit of yarn to show you in upcoming videos. But, you know, yeah, that's kind of what I have. I have, I guess I have a sort of acquisition. So I went to Knitomatic to return the skein of yarn that I'd previously purchased. And I was chatting with the store owner and commenting on new quantities of yarn and new lines that they have. And I noticed that they have Senna's Garns Double Sunday. And I was saying that I really like the color and you know, so many patterns are knit with it and so many knitters online use it. But my one Senna's Garn experience was not very positive because I'm a left-handed knitter. And if you remember a few episodes ago, filming from this very location, I aired my grievances with Senna's Garn Sisu, which is their sock yarn, which it seems that I, as a left-handed knitter, meaning my working needle is the left-hand one and my holding needle is the right-hand one, which is flipped from most how most people knit. I was knitting against the twist and against the ply of the yarn, which means even though Sisu is meant that you reinforce it 
um, the strength of it and the twist as you knit. If you're a right-handed knitter, I was untwisting it as I knit it, which meant for a horrible splitting experience when trying to catch floats and work colorwork socks on a small circumference. So that was a bad time. So I mentioned this to the owner and how I wasn't sure about you know, the double Sunday and if that was going to be an issue with most Sunday's garn yarns for me. And she said, oh yeah, I guess because it's like a Z twist versus an S twist. And we were talking about that and she ended up balling up a little bit of the yarn and giving me a little bit of it to try. The Sunday's garn double Sunday in a color that they had a lot of so that I can knit a little swatch and see how I feel about it and test out whether or not this will also unravel as I knit it being a lefty, or if it's just the Sisu and that the Sunday and the double Sunday will hold up just fine for a left-handed knitter. So that was incredibly kind of her, much appreciated. And so I will report back to her and to you guys when I knit this and find out. And I did not pay attention to what color this is. However, I did immediately recognize it as the color that Lizzie of Hive Knits is using for her contrast raglan. So if you go and look at her videos, I'm sure she mentions what color this is multiple times. So yeah, that is the closest thing I have to an acquisition to show you guys this week, which is nice. <laughs> um, instead, I wanted to again highlight that I have been going through all of the comments you guys left me uh, a few videos ago with all the designers and patterns that you feel deserve more recognition and more hype than they currently get. And I've created a Ravelry bundle under my Ravelry account. The username is local goblin, no symbols, no numbers. It'll be linked down below and the bundle will be linked down below so you guys can peruse. I'm going to put on screen now like a video of me scrolling through that Ravelry bundle so you can see a whole bunch of them and I thought I would maybe give a warning just in case for people who looking at Ravelry triggers bad things in their brains you can click away but you guys recommended all sorts of patterns there are socks there are shawls there are sweaters there are hats there are mittens there's even a crochet pattern because one person recommended a crochet pattern called I think the flower alls which are really really cool and I'm very, very happy that I asked that I made this the way to enter the giveaway because so many of these patterns uh, are now at the top of my list of things to knit, such as the Drinks on the Patio Crop by Shanna K. Salmon or the Wee Field Mouse Mitts by Grey Owl Knits. And there are so many beautiful other designs that came from such a wonderful array of creative brains that I had not heard of before, as well as a few patterns or designers that I did know of and have knit myself or have purchased the pattern for or have been following for a long time but have not gotten around to knitting. And so I felt very cool and in the know when those were recommended too. But if you're in the mood or in the market for expanding your knitting horizons, I recommend that you check it out. And maybe we can spread the word about a bunch of underappreciated or upper underrepresented designers in our sphere. So that would be nice. That is my spiel. And yeah, I guess that's all I have to share with you guys today. For those of you who like shorter podcasts, this one's for you. For those of you guys who prefer longer podcasts like me and just pause them and go about your day when you run out of time, we both know I will have more to show you very soon and there will be lots more hour-long videos in my future because I am one heck of a chatty Kathy. But for now, I'm going to go back to work and I hope you guys have a good day, a good week, happy knitting, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys again soon. Okay.